I need to carry my purse and be like, Sheree, what, what am I? Who am I? Tell me again. I see in your purse. I will live in your purse. That's a Louis Vuitton. Yeah, hey, that was the ex-boyfriend. <laughs>Hey Canada, what's up? It's me, your girl Julie Black, and I'm here with my soul sister, prolific writer, Shiro, she e o, oh my goodness, award-winning author, Cherie Demoline. It's all about the Mary Thieves. What up, girl? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic, and good. I'm happy that you're here. I got some questions for you. Okay, let's do it. Okay, first one. How did you come up with the title of your book? Okay, so this is a two-part answer. Okay. So the first one is. I'm about 20 years old and I'm hanging out at the Friendship Center with a bunch of other indigenous kids and we're really angry. Mm. We're like yelling around about injustice and things that are happening in our communities. And this Inuit elder comes in and he says, um, he listens to us for a minute and then he says, well, you guys are real pissed off. We said, yeah, we're angry. And he said, okay, do you ever consider that maybe you should be compassionate? We said, okay. We are compassionate. We're compassionate for our people, for our families, for our communities. That's why we're angry. And he said, no, maybe you should show some compassion for the people you're angry at. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know, what do, the, what do these white people need our compassion for? And he said, because when they left their lands, they had killed all their medicine people. Mm -hmm. They had killed all of the women that held their teachings. So, you know, the druids and then the witches and everyone, they lost their medicine people. And when you don't have your elders anymore, you become children. Mm -hmm. So what we're dealing with is a society of children. Hmm. And when children are left to their own devices and they have to survive, they can be quite brutal. And so this is what happened. They came over here trying to survive as a society of kids. That's deep. Um, and then years later, so years later, a couple of books out, and I'm in uh, the Indian Yellowknife with a group of Indigenous women writers. Mm -hmm. And me and my friend were complaining about how horrible it is to be pregnant. You know, everyone's like, oh, it's so beautiful and like carrying <laughs> life. And we're like, it's the worst. Um, and she said to me, you know, it's because a fetus will do anything, right, inside of you to live. Mm -hmm. um, they'll literally leach the vitamins out of your bones. They're really just the most beautiful marrow thieves. And so that's where the idea wow. came. Wow. <laughs> uh, what was it about my book that you connected with? Ooh, um, the story of family, for sure. Mm -hmm. Family versus um, relatives. Mm -hmm. Having to continue to persevere um, mm -hmm. through trials, through tribulations, realizing that there is hope always. Mm -hmm. um, so many of the characters, um, even Riri, well, I'm talking about, they're gonna think I'm talking about Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> Fond of replay. Okay, there's another re re in the book. Um, um, I won't get into details, but all the characters uh, I totally related to, or I could I could put faces of different family members or friends to, oh. to them. Yeah, they became real in my mind. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. What is the strangest thing you've done to research a book? <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm currently working on this book, and so I had to I have to look into uh, evangelical uh, churches and mm. missionaries and revival tents. You know, like old timey mm, yeah. like stomp and revival yeah. tents. So a couple weeks ago, uh, driving back from Santa Fe, I decided I had to make this research stop. So we stopped uh, in the hills of Kentucky. Did you know there is a life-size Noah's Ark? What? Yes. Somebody no. has built, yes, a life-size Noah's Ark. So you get there, you pay a very nice lady $50, you get on a bus, what? you take the bus up the mountain, and it is it is a life-size Noah's Ark. And you go in and it's like, they have all like the replicas, like mannequin, like Noah and his no wife. No way. And, yeah, and all the animals. So did they do it like biblical measurements yes, and all that? Yes, they no, did. No, I gotta yes, go there. Yes, they did. It no. was, yes, and at the end, they did a laser show on the side of the Noah's Ark. What? I know. Okay, no, cool. and you get hot chocolate. Okay. Yeah. No, that's so okay. I'm gonna, I want to go there. That's yeah. awesome. And why did you decide to do Canada Reads? Oh my goodness. I decided to do Canada Reads because I realized that I read the same types of books. I don't feel like I need to learn something. Mm. Like, you know, you finish mm. school and you read the books that have to do with you, the problems you think you have, mm -hmm. interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, ah, oh, man, I miss being a student. Like, I miss mm. that, even that little bit of anxiety of like deadlines and learning. Mm -hmm. And then boom, CBC came calling and I was like, okay, God, I didn't say right now. <laughs> you know, like, okay, read the five books, five books I wouldn't have necessarily chosen myself. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's totally impacted me in such a positive way. Uh, what do you hope readers take away from reading this book? Uh, I hope that people 
take hope. Mm -hmm. They do. It's pretty dark. It's apocalyptic. I mean, we're talking about the future. There's like, you know, the, the reemergence of the residential school system. There's people running for their lives. There's, mm -hmm. you know, not everything that happens is uh, pretty, but it's strong mm -hmm. and it's hopeful. And I hope that, you know, when people read it, they realize that even in the worst circumstances, man, we're good. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I, I've definitely found that out. It's awesome.